we're going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. This effort, and China has big plans for this. They intend to seed um, their digital yuan into the global environment by giving it away to visitors at next winter's Olympics. When they arrive at the airport, they're gonna get di yuan digital wallets, they're gonna receive digital yuan, they're gonna use it uh, throughout their visits to Beijing, and then they're gonna take it back to their own countries. They see this as a huge advantage. Why? Because who controls the underlying protocols, who un controls the underlying standards of the future of money will control the future of money. They're not terrifically powerful yet, but they're doing something completely different than what your computer does. And that thing is like flight. It gives these computers access to these new resources, maybe you could call them parallel universes, in order to do something that you couldn't otherwise do. And that's not the only one. In fact, the one I'm going to com come back to and talk to in the context of the story that I'm wrapping this in was recently installed at NASA. And Google uh, was the primary uh, interested party that pulled this whole thing together. And this one is really exciting to me because what they're going to do is apply this machine to an area that I think is fundamentally important. It's the crux of our future as humans, and that's can we build machines like us? So building machines like us might be possible. I certainly believe it is. I might be wrong. But what I do know is that the types of approaches that people are taking now to build intelligent machines benefit immensely from what this machine that we've built does best. So what this center is about is applying this beautiful new computational idea in the service of trying to make intelligent machines. Now, I can't think of anything personally any cooler than trying to use quantum computers to build intelligent machines. So this is very exciting to me. Steve Jurvetson has been a longtime uh, friend and investor in the company. And for those of you who don't know him, he's a uh, Silicon Valley investor who's probably the smartest VC that I know of, and certainly the one that's the most attuned to technological trends. He's, uh, he's on the board of SpaceX, Tesla, Synthetic Genomics, which is Craig Venter's company is trying to build uh, artificial life, and D-Wave, and that's it. Industries and companies around the world are in a flat-out sprint to develop the first robust quantum computers, machines, uh, that could make today's classical computers largely obsolete. Eamon Jevers uh, joins us now with more on his efforts uh, to develop uh, the next generation quantum <laughs> computer. Somebody else doing that, Eamon? Not Amen? me, Joe, not me. <laughs> Yeah, you know, there are some there's some other people who are working on that. And we went That's to the good. headquarters of IonQ to meet them. That's a publicly traded quantum computing startup. It's right across the street from the University of Maryland, just outside of Washington, D.C. here. And over on the campus, hundreds of quantum scientists are pushing the limits of this new technology, which experts say will leapfrog today's so-called classical computers in raw calculating power. But the U.S. intelligence community warns quantum is one of the five technologies crucial to the 21st century, and they say China and other foreign countries are aggressively trying to steal these new discoveries. That means... That you know, this is a gigantic room right now, but people are working really hard on sort of miniaturizing cold atom setups such that you This is called the Discovery District, and the first anchor um, element was this building, which is what we call it the hotel. So this we technical and security the challenge hotel. that these guys have at the same time, uh, and the university president says he's tried to strike a balance between security and open research here. 
security agencies like the FBI and others have alluded us to these issues where there has been espionage. And we do have to be careful about that. I think that's a reasonable expectation of university. Now at IONQ, their quantum computer is already being used by customers from Google to Goldman Sachs, but they're also seeing intense interest from outside the United States. If we look at our website, about half the traffic is from China. Half? Half. From so, China? Yep. And their people are busily probing and, you know, trying to do um, various things trying to get through it. So guys, the quantum computers at IonQ are real, but they're in their infancy. Chapman says one of the biggest challenges will be finding scientists who can write the programs that will run on these tremendously powerful machines. And when they do, Chapman believes that the hardware and software sides of this business will be bigger even than what he somewhat dismissively calls today's classical computer industry. So there's a lot here in terms of the impact on the hardware and software industries, but also impact on things like drug discovery, climate change, and all kinds of other science research and development. Guys, back over to you. Companies are looking uh, for solutions to the supply chain slowdown, and one uh, possible solution, uh, AI, AI technology, to target customers more efficiently. Joining us now is David Steinberg, Zeta Global CEO. Uh, the company starts its annual Zeta Live conference today, featuring discussions on uh, AI and the future of marketing. $51 billion last year, uh, David, in 2020. $641 billion by 2028. That 50 to 640, that's compound growth of 36.1%. That's faster than the deficit uh, that we're running uh, in Washington. It, about the same. Uh, actually, sure. I, this is something we need to invest in, it seems like, uh, as uh, for what it can do and for how much money you could make in this business. Well, it's, first of all, very little is running faster than deficit, Joe. <laughs> <Continue> <laughs> That's right. Uh, giving it a know, run. Exactly. I agree. The, the, the reason AI is getting the type of attention and investment it is is because of the return on investment you get. There's very little that you can invest in that can give you better return, whether it's marketing, supply chain management, or other major issues that companies are dealing with. And what we're really seeing now is the single best way for companies to work through the supply chain issues are by using artificial intelligence to better manage their marketing. You know, how do you understand what products you actually have in stock, when you're gonna have them in stock, and how to market those products versus, I think we've all been online, we've bought something, and by the time we go through the 15 minute process to purchase it, <laughs> It, it then says it's out of stock or it tells you even worse, you buy it and it tells you you're going to get it after Christmas. So, you know, the ability to understand that type of stuff and literally push to people products that you have that are comparable to what they might want. But the ability to guarantee them you're going to get those products in time for Christmas is going to be a big game changer for companies. I mean, we know the data is there. We know everybody knows what we want. I, if I, let me see what happened to me. So let's say I need a toilet bowl brush, you know, and I go, where can I buy okay. one of those? So, so I look for that. And, and next thing you know, every toilet brush maker in the country is, is hitting my, it's like, whoa, how did that happen? <laughs> and so why not? If you're looking for it, but you can't get that one, why shouldn't AI allow whomever, Amazon or someone to get you one? It's just as good. It, it, it absolutely can. It's just a question of the implementation, right? Right now, most companies, as they've grown, have looked at, you know, their company in silos, right? So you have one silo, which is manufacturing, another, which is supply chain, another is inventory management. And I think as we've all found out over the last year and a half, you know, most companies just in time inventory management is not going to work in the current environment. Uh, and then you run into container issues and all those problems. And then on the other side of the house, you have the chief marketing officer who's simply pushing whatever they think is hottest. Until we fully integrate those two things, which is what we're doing right now at Zeta, we're importing inventory management into the marketing and the ability to tell people, you know, you might have thought you wanted that toilet brush. But here are three toilet brushes that are just as good. And quite frankly, we can get these to you really quickly. Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. 
And guys, you know, I come back with that video just to make you think. And we have quantum computing. And now we see why Bitcoin is so important. Cryptocurrencies are so important because in this virtual world that they're building, you need those virtual currencies, the NFTs. But quantum computing is going to change the world and also the universe. And remember the crypto teacher told you, when they flip the switch for these quantum computers, which they already have them ready to go, and remember the crypto teacher told you, don't let TV fool you and act like they're working on something. They're not working on anything. It's already set and ready to go. And I'm going to do a video on my Patreon to show you that this weekend. But guys, when it comes to quantum computing, they're going to be moving so fast, you're not going to know what's real and what's fake. And that's the reason why artificial intelligence is so important to the new world order. If you put 5G along with these quantum computers and these satellites, the new world order is going to be able to control the minds of the masses. Because we know when it comes to the new world order, it's all planned out. You have a wonderful day. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come. Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis, whether it's your job, whether it's in your community. We have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share. But this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1. King Joshua and Grandma Tim save the village. Part 2. King Joshua and Grandma Tim save New York. Long COVID-33. Part 3. King Joshua and Grandma Tim go to China. It's mandatory to get Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3 of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.